Usually when professional athletes retire, it's due to an injury or because they simply can't dominate like they used to. But then there are those athletes whose careers have been cut short after they've been accused of committing heinous crimes, like the following. If there's one thing that can be learned from the case of former NFL player Eric Naposky, it's that time won't necessarily shield you from being held accountable for a past crime. On May 21, 2009, he was arrested in Greenwich, Connecticut for killing millionaire businessman Bill McLaughlin 15 years earlier. Back in 1994, the police were conducting their initial investigation inside McLaughlin's Newport Beach, California home. They didn't have any solid leads until they stopped Naposky's vehicle on a traffic warrant and found a notebook with McLaughlin's license plate number written inside of it. But nothing came of that at the time, and Naposky resumed his football career with the Barcelona Dragons in Europe's World League, before eventually settling down in Connecticut with a wife and two kids. The police later determined that McLaughlin's girlfriend, Nanette Johnston, was romantically involved with Naposky while engaged to McLaughlin, and that they conspired to kill McLaughlin to get his money. In 2011, Naposky was found guilty and later sentenced to life in prison, while Johnston received the same sentence one year later. Dave Meggett had a 10-year NFL career as a running back and punt returner for the New York Giants, New England Patriots, and New York Jets. But then in November 2010, he was sentenced to 30 years for first-degree criminal sexual conduct and first-degree burglary after assaulting a female college student named Stacy Hooper in South Carolina. This wasn't the first of Meggett's legal problems. In 1998, he was arrested in Toronto for assaulting an escort, though the trial ended in a hung jury. He was later accused of assaulting his ex-girlfriend in North Carolina and received two years of probation in 2007. Hooper testified during the 2010 trial as she claimed that she and Meggett had consensual relations eight months before the assault and that he had also loaned her $200. On January 13, 2009, he asked her to return the money, but she couldn't afford it. She testified that he was going to take a down payment before attacking her. In 2013, it was reported that Meggett wanted the conviction in his 2009 case to either be thrown out or to have a new trial. He claimed that his attorney didn't properly prepare during the trial, thus making him ineffective counsel, although this request was ultimately shot down. He almost killed me. What would he have done to someone else? South African sprinter Oscar Pistorius' fall from grace was hard and fast. On February 14, 2013, he shot and killed his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, in his Pretoria home, though he claimed that he thought she was a criminal intruder. There was a media frenzy surrounding his trial, as he was a decorated athlete who wowed crowds at both the Paralympic and Olympic Games. Pistorius was ultimately found guilty of culpable homicide and was initially given a five-year prison sentence. After serving just 10 months, he was given permission to serve the rest of his time on house arrest. However, South Africa's justice minister eventually blocked his release, saying that there was, quote, no legal basis for the parole board to free Pistorius. In 2015, after prosecutors claimed that the initial sentence was too lenient, the Supreme Court of Appeal upgraded the charge from culpable homicide to murder, and a judge sentenced him to six years. And that wasn't even the last time that Pistorius was sentenced for shooting Steenkamp. After the government contested his six-year sentence, the Supreme Court of Appeal handed him a sentence of 13 years and five months. He will be eligible for parole in 2023. John War Machine Copenhaver had a respectable career as a mixed martial artist, but he'll probably be forever known for what happened on August 8, 2014. That was the day that he beat up his ex-girlfriend Christy Mack and her boyfriend Corey Thomas. Copenhaver and Mack had dated for years, but they ultimately split, allegedly because the ex-fighter had a bad temper and was physically abusive. On the night of the attack, it's alleged that Copenhaver entered Mack's Las Vegas home without permission. He then beat up Thomas, leaving him with several injuries, including a broken nose and a dislocated shoulder. Copenhaver told Thomas to leave, and he then began savagely beating Mack, leaving her with a badly ruptured liver, fractured rib, broken nose, broken teeth, and 18 broken bones. The fallen fighter was eventually arrested in a hotel room in Simi Valley, California, and he's now serving a life sentence at Nevada's Ely State Prison. I do feel that justice has been served. For a while, it seemed like Clifford Etienne was actually turning his life around after being sent to prison for armed robbery and then being paroled in 1998. While he was locked up at Louisiana State Penitentiary and Wynn and Dixon Correctional Centers, he took up boxing and got pretty good at it. He would go on to win the State Prison Boxing Championship, and his success continued after his release as he began his professional career. He eventually racked up an impressive record of 29 wins, 4 losses, and 2 draws. He even fought Mike Tyson on February 22nd 
2nd, 2003, though he ended up getting knocked out in that bout. Despite the loss, Etienne would still probably think of that time of his life as the good old days. Just three years later, he was convicted of several criminal charges, including attempted second-degree murder after stealing nearly $2,000 from a check-cashing business in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He also tried to hijack a car that was occupied by a couple of children. Then he successfully hijacked another car that was also occupied by two children. And he tried to shoot two police officers, but his gun jammed. During his trial, Etienne's legal team claimed that he was high on drugs while committing those crimes and couldn't discern right from wrong due to having brain trauma from boxing. My mind was really messed up. It was really messed up. But the jury didn't buy it, and he was sentenced to 160 years behind bars. That sentence was later reduced to 105 years due to a technicality. In 2008, former professional bodybuilder Craig Titus was sentenced to 21 to 55 years in prison for killing his personal assistant in Las Vegas. His wife, former Miss Fitness America Kelly Ryan, was also arrested. Back in 2005, 28-year-old Melissa James, who had been injected with a fatal dose of morphine, was found dead and burned inside Ryan's Jaguar. James also had been beaten and attacked with a taser. Titus later claimed to police that James injected herself with morphine. He and his wife played dumb when they learned that James James was found inside the Jaguar, but surveillance footage caught Ryan buying seven bottles of lighter fluid at a Walmart not far from the scene. The couple then left Las Vegas for Boston. They eventually claimed that James was accidentally killed during a drug-fueled fight, though they admitted to burning her body. Their reasoning was that they didn't want the body to be found or identified because it would sully their careers. Before the crime, Titus and Ryan were a power couple in the fitness world, who often appeared in magazines together. For her part, Ryan was sentenced to 6 to 26 years behind bars, though she was released on parole in 2017. Titus will be eligible for parole in December 2026. I don't think people were too shocked that, that Craig was the one involved in this. Former professional bodybuilder Bertil Fox's fall was rather steep, considering he had a 25-year career and won multiple titles before being convicted of murder in 1998. On September 30, 1997, he shot and killed his former fiancée, Leoka Brown, and her mother, Violet, in Violet's dress shop on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts, where he was born. Fox claimed that his gun went off by mistake while he and Violet were fighting for it. Fox was convicted of killing both women on May 22, 1998, and he was sentenced to be hanged. But that was halted after a successful appeal was made to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, so instead he was given a life sentence. When Sports Illustrated visited him in prison that year, he revealed, I've never been in prison before. I'm locked up all day. I come out to shower in the morning and come out to shower at night. I work out in the cell. That's all there is to do. I've never been in trouble in my life. Overnight, I'm a monster. When former pro wrestler Hardbody Harrison's career didn't work out as planned, he allegedly became a pimp and got into sex trafficking. Now he's serving a life sentence in prison. After getting an honorable discharge from the United States Army in 1995, the Georgia native joined World Championship Wrestling as a jobber, that is, someone who routinely loses matches to the main draw combatant. Despite going on to win the heavyweight championship in 2000 on the FX show Tough Man, he wasn't offered a new contract when the WCW was bought by the WWE. WWE's Vince McMahon the following year. Eventually, Harrison turned to a life of crime to make ends meet. He would bail women out of jail, offer them a place to stay at his Cartersville, Georgia house, and then have them work as sex workers. At the time of his arrest, it was alleged that several women lived in his home against their wills and were forced into intimate encounters in addition to performing household chores. Harrison had reportedly created a debt system to keep them under his reign. During his trial, he served as his own lawyer and claimed that the women lived with him because they were training to be wrestlers. But his argument didn't sway the jurors, who in 2007 found him guilty of several charges, including sex trafficking, aggravated sexual abuse, and forced labor. When Keith Wright was selected by the Houston Texans in the sixth round of the 2003 NFL Draft, his future was looking bright, but he eventually succumbed to a huge downfall. Before being drafted, he was a standout defensive lineman at the University of Missouri. After a short stint with the Texans, he went on to play for the Indianapolis Colts, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Arizona Cardinals, before crossing the pond for a season in NFL Europe. He ended his career in 2006 with the Detroit Lions. In 2012, Wright received a prison sentence of 234 years and 8 months after committing three armed home robberies in Sacramento, California.
In addition to stealing money and people's belongings, he reportedly assaulted one of his victims after making her drive him to two ATMs to get money. He was caught after trying to exchange some foreign currency that he took from one of the residences. There were also stolen items found in his home. Wright was ultimately charged with armed robbery, kidnapping, first-degree burglary, false imprisonment, and forcible oral copulation. Darren Sharper started his NFL career in 1997 with the Green Bay Packers. He followed that up with stints with the Minnesota Vikings and the New Orleans Saints, with whom he won a Super Bowl in 2010. He then retired in 2011 and became an analyst for the NFL Network. But now he's known for assaulting at least 16 women in four states, and in 2016, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Sharper was first indicted in New Orleans in 2013, when he was charged with drugging and assaulting two women with his friend Eric Nunez. He allegedly plied women with drugs like Valium, Ambien, Xanax, and Ecstasy before assaulting them. He was also accused of drugging and assaulting women in California, Arizona, and Las Vegas. A former police officer was also named as an accomplice, as he had reportedly supplied Sharper with the drugs. In addition to his 20-year sentence, Sharper was sentenced to 18 years and 4 months by a Louisiana state judge, and his sentences will run concurrently. If you or someone you know has been the victim of sexual assault, you can call the National Sexual Assault hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673 or visit rain.org for additional resources.